Hello, hello everyone. It is Jackie with Pocket of Preschool and I am so excited to share all about counting stews with you tonight. It's there, it's a fun math counting game that's hands-on that you can play with your kiddos. If you have counting stews, will you in the comments tell me what is your favorite counting stew? What's your kid's favorite? What's your favorite? Um, or maybe there's one you wish I would make. And I have very exciting news. I have 12 new stews tonight to share with you and release tonight, which is why I was late. <laughs> um, so yeah, there's a total now of 43 stews. So if you're wondering what these counting stews are, let me tell you what they are. So they're basically a hands-on counting game. Let me grab a fun one. Okay, let me grab one of the new ones. How about that? So here is the new pet counting stew. So it comes with a song card, and the song is to um, Purple Stew. If you look it up on YouTube, it's actually a, um, a Go Noodle song, too. It's been around forever. Um, yeah, it's it's a really fun one. If your kids, um, if you do Go Noodle, you can do the Go Noodle Purple Stew, and that'll get the tempo kind of in their brain. And then they'll sing it like crazy. So basically what they do is you get these trays, and I'll tell you about the trays in just a minute, um, but they, you're basically counting out a recipe. So like here's the pet recipe card. So they would get two fish flakes, five carrots, and four collars. And typically you use a bowl, but for sometimes for some things you can use other bowls, like for the pet too, how fun would it be to use a dog bowl or a kitty bowl and to put your items in. So you would count out two fish flakes and one, two, and then you would count out five carrots, one, two, three, four, five, and then they can recount them in their hand, and then four collars, one, two, three, four. Oh, and sorry, I got glued them together. And then they mix it up with a spoon, which I can't reach right now, um, and then they sort it all back into the tray. So you can see they're counting, they're identifying numbers, and then at the end, they're sorting things back in the tray. And I know you're thinking like, do I have all these things in my classroom? Well, um, if you don't, I try and use things that I know you have in your classroom, or I tell you guys how you can make them. So for the fish stew, these are just little dog bones. Um, and then these collars are, um, I had bought two leashes from the dollar store and I cut them up and made little dog collars. Um, and then for the fish flakes, I just cut up foam. I use foam and felt a lot. Um, and you can buy foam and felt at um, Walmart or um, like a craft store, um, so fish flakes. And then I have um, balls of yarn, which I actually tried to make balls of yarn and I burned my finger with the hot glue gun. So. That was enough with that. So I just balled up some, um, what are these, pipe cleaners? And then um, we use counters a lot. So the counters we use a lot are the pet counters, the vegetable counters, and the transportation counters. We use a lot. And I figured those are counters that most people have in their classroom. If you don't have pet counters, you're gonna love them. Um, they're awesome. But I figure, and if maybe your kids don't like stews one year, you can still use these counters for math um, and for um, building with little blocks and things like that. So I kind of um, use things from the dollar store and counters, you typically. And then let me show you kind of one of the direction pages. So I put everything in a binder and then behind me, I put all the ingredients. So like here is, let me find one. So like here is the fall stew. And on the fall stew, every um, stew that has a picture of what it looks like, or how mine looked anyways, yours can look different. And then it has everything you need. And it has either how you can make them or items you can probably have in your classroom or you can find at the dollar store um, to grab them. Um, and then the song cards at the bottom. And they all come with a worksheet. So I know some people are asking, how can you get these? So because there are now um, 43 stews, I have them now divided up. Which that, was, that was what was taking me so long. And that way, if you want to try them, you can try a smaller pack um, too. So there are seasons counting stews. There are holiday counting stews. There are themed counting stews. 
and math counting too. So in like the math one, there is a, there's um, 2D shape stews, 3D shape stews, which is a new one. And then there's a number stew. But if you, the, at the top of this post, there's a link. So click on that and it'll take you to my stews page on my Teachers Pay Teacher Store. And it will show you the giant bundle. And then it'll show you the holiday, the theme, the seasons and the math concepts too. So if you want to buy them individually, but if you own the bundle, download it again and you'll get your update with all of these fantastic um, fun new stews. So that's what was taking me so long. And there's a new bundle feature. So um, the files were getting too big. People weren't able to print it very easily. So if you own the bundle, you now, when you download it from Teachers Pay Teachers, you're gonna get four files. So you're gonna get the themed stews, the holiday stews, the uh, math concepts stews, and the other one. Seasons, holidays, math concepts, and themes. So you'll get all four of those files. So that way it'll be a little bit easier for you to manage. And the table of contents on them is clickable, so you can click the stew you want and you can go to that page. And there's tons of teacher direction pages included, um, has tons of organizational ideas. They all come with labels. Um, and I'll tell you about that really quick. So how I store them is I store them in this big crate behind me and I put a label on the front of the baggie and I put the stew cards inside and all the things. So like you can see I have like the coal and the scarves and the snowballs and the hats and the eyeballs or not eyeballs. That must be in the wrong bag. <laughs> Happens. And then the stew cards all fit in a quart baggie. So I put all of those in here. I might have to get a bigger tub once I show you all the new ones because it's really full. And I, you're probably going to ask me next, well, how do they have them? Like, how do I keep them in my room? So for every theme, and now I think I have almost all the themes covered. I have one in, so this is my math shelf. Um, and like next, when we come back from holiday break, we're going to do a shape theme. So this is one of the 2D shape stews. So I just have them in my sorting tray. Um, I have the stew cards in the middle and then I just have some pots next to it. And I have stirs. So you can use spatulas, you can use wooden spoons, you can use little whisks. It's kind of whatever you want, whatever you have in your classroom um, works anything really you could use to stir it um and it, you or you can stir it something based on your theme and the pots everybody always asks me about these pots these are from ikea in if when you download the pack there are links to amazon you can buy like melissa and doug ones you can go to the dollar store you can go to walmart so just any kind of small pots work but these are from ikea they're very similar to the Melissa and Doug ones, um, and I think they're the Kid Zara ones. Um, a lot of people are getting for these, um, for your pots. And then you can also do like change it up for your theme. So like for the pet stew, you know, you can use a dog bowl. Um, for the beach stew, you can mix it in a pail. For the, the um, flower stew, put it in everything in a pot. Friendship stew, put in like a heart basket. Witch's brew and leprechaun brew, you can put in a cauldron just to kind of keep it fun and fresh. And for the clothing too, you can use a white basket um, and it'll look like a laundry a laundry basket, super fun. And I'll tell you about the clothing too in just a minute. So I think I'm, oh, and everybody always asks too. Oh, the labels do come with the bundle. Every, um, so the first, I think 10 pages of every bundle are the same. It has directions, it links you to the Facebook group. That way, um, I know in the Facebook group, a lot of people share their stews out or if they can't find something, um, like the corn was hard to find for a little while um, for the fall stew. People are like, oh, it's at Hobby Lobby or oh, it's I found it here at Michael's um, or I found it at the dollar store. Um, so all of that's in there. There's tips on um, organization. And if you have a great way you organize your stew, if you want to pop a, a photo in the comments, that would be amazing. Because I, I think everybody loves organization stuff. Well, I, you guys know I do. But um, yeah, so you can, that way other people can organize it the way that works for them. And then, so another way that people are making things are with this air dry clay, or not air dry, it's like oven dry clay. Um, I made the fossils with the dinosaurs too with that. Some people, if you're super talented, you can use this clay. I think it's like a dollar, like a little package at like Walmart or Michael's. And so th that's in there. 
Um, and there's different ways to play it. So since we've been playing it all year, um, and we've had it for every theme, I just have it out on the shelf, or I put it out on the table, and the kiddos literally walk over and they play it as a center choice. My center time is open centers. They get to pick wherever center they wanna play in, and they get to pick whatever they wanna do. And kids actually pick the stew game independently. Like, and I, and I know a lot of the printable games that we all print out and they're awesome. A lot of kiddos just don't, sometimes they don't, they don't wanna do those because they're not, a lot of it's, you know, they're moving like a piece of paper around or they're moving paper manipulatives. Well, for these, even though it is, you know, like, like this is very engaging. I like all those different things and it's for each theme. And it's also great for building that vocabulary related to the theme. Um, like, you know, collar and carrot, because what animals eat, what, what, what pets eat carrots, what, what pets eat fish flakes, what pet plays with a ball of yarn. Um, so yeah, so it's great for that too. And so the first couple times we introduced it at the beginning of the year, we do, I do it during small group time. We put the stew tray in the middle and we still do it sometimes for small group, especially when there's a stew that's um, really fun or sometimes to introduce a new stew, we'll do it for small group. But we put the stew tray in the middle and we have one pot and the kiddos, um, I'll have the stew card out and the first kiddo will get the first ingredient, the second kiddo will get the third ingredient and then whoever gets this one mixes it. We all sing the song together put everything back and then we pick a new card and then the next kiddo picks the next thing and we just keep going like that. You can also use it during um, a transition um, and it's also um, a great way to observe what kiddos can identify numbers, what kiddos are counting with one-to-one -one correspondence, um, what kiddos are using the correct vocabulary, um, what kiddos are interacting with each other, which ones are not. Um, so there's lots of great, you can do lots of observational assessments with these stews, which is awesome. Oh, and I forgot to tell you, so the stew cards come in two levels. They come with numbers one to five, and then the higher numbers, so up to, up to nine, and then there's blank ones. <laughs> I threw it. There's blank ones, so your kiddos can use a dry erase marker and fill it in. Um, so that way they can use bigger numbers if you want. Let me grab that so I don't lose it. Ha, ha, ha. Okay. I have an itch. Um, so yeah, so it comes the three to bulbs. And some people say, well, what? My kids don't recognize the numbers yet. So there are, and you can tell I have them on my shelf. Um, I have number lines. There's, whoops, there's a 10 frame number line and one with dice. And you can teach kiddos how to count one, two, three, four. And then they go, oh, this is number four. Or they can, if they don't know that number's four, then there's dots under it. So then they can count the dots. So that way they can problem solve and figure out the numbers. And I have three and a half year olds that use this. Um, and you have to model it um, and kind of, and I, when I play next to them, like when it's my turn, I'll model using the number line. Um, and then you can help them learn how to use it. And once they learn how to use it, it's really, um, it comes like second nature and they just count automatically to figure out the number on the card. Um, I do have um, brand new threes. We'll play this too, especially at the beginning of the year. Some of my kiddos turned three in July and we start school in August. Um, and they pick out, they'll pick out a recipe card and they'll make up the numbers and they're counting. And you know what? That's okay with me. A young three, if they're picking the number out, or they're picking a card and they're saying, oh, I need four zebras or four mammals for the zoo stew. And they get out four and they say, oh, I want three trains. And they pick out three. As long as they're counting, I'm happy. Um, because if, if they're making it at their own level and a lot of kiddos will do that. So the number lines are included in all of the bundles. So the number lines are included in there. So just download it again and print off the number lines. And it includes the dot, the dice, and the 10 frame number line. So those are all included in there. So a lot of times um, you can find these sorting trays at the Dollar Tree. Um, you can always find them at party stores, but they are more expensive at party stores. Um, the Dollar Tree always has usually red, blue, and white. And then the, you can get the colors um, when they, you know, like in the spring, they usually have like pink and teal and blue, um, stuff like that. But if you want 
um, them right now and you want all the colors, like red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple, they are, you can get them at Lakeshore. And I will say the Lakeshore ones are a little bit more sturdy than the ones from the Dollar Tree and the colors are really vibrant. And even if, let's say, you don't use stews like five years from now, you'll still use these trays. Because I use these trays also for like Play-Doh trays um, and things like that. And the song card is in the bundle. Yes, somebody asked about the song card. And it is, I'm not going to lie, it is a lot of work to prep them. But once they're prepped, just put everything in your baggie. Here's my number stew. Well, that one's kind of not a very good example. <laughs> Let me pull out a different one. So here's my color stew. So this is, and the color stew is in the math concepts bundle. Um, once it's prepped, then it's super easy. You just pull out the bag, sort it out, or you can even put the bag on top and maybe um, you let the kiddos um, set up the game. And then it's one less thing to prep and they might love setting it up and they're just sorting. So it's, it's a great sorting opportunity. So yeah, so once it's prepped, which it does take time to prep because I just prepped, 12 stews and it literally took me probably five hours but I prepped all 12 of them like I got the cards cut well maybe six hours with cut and laminate I'm pretty fast now um but yeah I prepped 12 stews and took me about five hours but that's finding all the stuff around my house like making the collars um cutting everything out so yeah they do take time to prep but they're so worth it I love it. Yeah. I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't t tell you guys to do it if it wasn't worth it. And I do them too. I, I, I prep them too. So I feel you guys. Um, yeah. Oh, so somebody's asked. So, um, the things that I use for the stews, um, I keep in the baggie. And then I put it in my box. But my counters, I always keep in my countertub. So um, like for the some of the new stews, I have, um, we're using farm counters. So farm transportation, um, bugs is another one I know um, you can use for the stews, and then pets. And I will put um, links to all of these counters on Amazon um, when I'm done, or my Amazon link, so you guys can grab that, grab them. And maybe, and I'll, I'll watch and see if any of them are on a Black Friday special too. Um, or you can get it from your teacher store. And so, yeah, so the counters I do keep with my counters and for math because we use them for other things and different things. So, yeah, so I use the pets, transportation, farm, insect, veg vegetable, vegetable counters, the veggie counters, and the um, fruit counters. But I, and so if you see like these little carrots or the corn, that's the vegetable, the vegetable counters. <laughs> I, I have a friend that she has this vegetable and it's, it's, she's, I, I've caught it. <laughs> so yeah. So the containers, so these containers are either Dollar Tree or Lakeshore and I'll put the link for you after we're done. Um, and I can put the link on Instagram for us too. And if I ever see them on sale, um, I'll let you guys know. And if you guys ever see the Sioux trays on sale from Lakeshore or if maybe there's a new Sioux tray and you see them at the Dollar Tree posted in the group and um, and then we can all run and get them. <laughs> so in the binder, what I keep are all of my stew pages with my song cards because the song cards don't fit in the quart baggies. And then there's worksheets for each stew. So I keep those behind it. So that's what I keep in my stew. And then my pattern block stew, which you can see that one, I keep those stew cards in here because my pattern blocks are in um, my stem bin or my stem drawers. So I keep my pattern blocks in there, so that way I have these right in here. And then, so I, you can see all the stews. I just have them in here, and that way if I ever need to know, like, do I have a, have a stew for that? I can just quickly look in here. If I need to grab a worksheet, um, I can just quickly grab it. And yeah, so there's a whole bunch. 43! So that's what's in the binder. So I have my binder, and then... I have my bucket. I'm gonna scoot over this way. And then I have my bucket with all of my baggies of stew, like my snowman stew. Here's the dinosaur stew. Gingerbread stew. This one is so much fun. Ocean stew. So, yeah. so they're all in here. But again, I might have to get a bigger tub. So let me show you guys the new one. So I showed you guys the pet one. Oh. 
So somebody's asking if I would get them translated and it's very tricky for me to get stuff translated because um, I don't know if it's correct. That's the only thing that makes me a little bit nervous, but I'll try and work on that for you guys getting some of this stuff translated. Um, so here's the pet stew. So there's balls of yarn, fish flakes, pets, which these are just the pet counters, and carrots, and then um, collars, and then bones. So these are really fun. If, and if you guys are debating on getting the pets, pet counters, there's puppies, birds, bunnies, hamsters, cats, and dogs. So there's a lot of different um, different ways you can use it. Like you can use birds when you're doing camping. You can put them in a sensory table for like with um, some bird seed. Or if you're doing um, like Easter or spring, you can use the bunny. So I really love the pet counters, not just for stews. Too. Here is the zoo stew. So we have hay, bales of hay, which is just yarn that the animals eat. And then I have mammals and insects. That way if you're kind of talking about um, the different kinds of things that are alive. So you have insects and mammals. And then these two, um, you can sometimes get little bags of animals. Like these I got from the dollar store just to kind of show you guys. They have like a farm and zoo and sometimes they have insects and they actually have a pet one right now. Let me find it. Yeah, here's the pet one. So they do have, um, if you're needing pets, they do have some little bags at the dollar store too. I love the dollar, or the dollar tree. And then so we have hay, mammals, insects. And then plants, and this is just um, some ivy I got from the dollar store, and I just cut it up. And then trains, which these are from the transportation counters, and then a map, and I thought that would be hard, so I included a little printable map for you. And then the clothing stew, because you guys have been dying for a clothing stew, for those of you who have to do a, a, um, a clothing theme. So... Um, these, you guys, somebody in the group said, um, they use these for the leprechaun brew, and these are those baby booties from, uh, the dollar store, um, in, like, the baby shower part, and I just spray painted them black, and I totally took the idea from someone in our Facebook group, so if that was your idea, shout out to you, or put your name down so I can give you a shout out, but I just spray painted them black, these are just those baby booties from in the baby shower section, and then little socks. I actually went into my kid's stuff and grabbed his little socks from when he was a baby. Oh, he's so big now. How did they? And they have these at the dollar store too. Um, I'll, okay, I'll keep going. <laughs> and then buttons, because you can talk about what, um, how you can close um, your clothes and how all the things functions that are on clothing. And then I have shirts, and I. I didn't want to buy like ten dollars worth of clothing from the dollar store, so I just cut some from felt. And then I have pants, which I cut from felt again. And then hats. Oh, we're kind of glued. <laughs> so I just made little hats. All right, so that's the clothing suit. And, and you can use a little, um, if you have little white baskets, how cute would this be? It'd be like a little laundry basket you guys could use it with. Oh, so fun. And I include all of these fun little notes in um, with um, on the teacher direction page. So the next one is a polar animal stew. So the animals that live in the North and the South Poles. How cute, right? So we have ice, and I just said foil. Fish, again, from the pet counters. Snow. And then seals. And penguins. You can use mini erasers for your stews, too. And polar bears. So I actually need to find, like, three more polar bears. Um, because the highest number for the polar bears is six, so I only need six of them. So yeah, and I, some people ask that, how many do I have? Um, I usually try and have between nine and twelve, but polar bears I figured out are a little hard to come by. So I just, if, if you can't find any, just look for the highest number of that thing and just get that many. And then they'll just have to take turns and share, which is, that's great for doing, um, working on those social skills too. And the fairy tale stew. Oh my gosh, you guys. So I I went to the party store because my own kiddo's birthday is coming up. And I found little princess crowns and magic wands. I did spray paint these because they were all pink. And I wanted the boys to think they could be do magic too. So I, I spray painted them yellow. So I have wands. So the party favor section is a really good section to find stew stuff. 
um, crowns and then roses and then poison apples. So I took these apple counters and I just dripped some brown paint on them so they look like they're poison for Snow White. Um, and again, all these ideas are included on the teacher direction page. And then beanstalk for Jack and the Beanstalk. And then these are from the dollar store um, and they're little frogs for the frog prints. So yeah, so how fun is that fairy tale stew? All right, okay. So now we have transportation stew, which I know you guys have been wanting this one for a while. So I did three modes of transportation. So I have boats, planes, and cars, and then I did kind of where they are. So we have like boats, for, so boats, and then there's water, and then I have planes with the clouds, and I have cars, and again, these are just the transportation counters. You can use like um, like little um, boats and planes and cars from the dollar store too, if you'd want to do that too. And then I just took some foam and some puffy paint and I made rooms, super simple. So yeah, so there's the transportation stew. Okay. And then here's a farm stew. So I have beans and then hay for, you know, either farmers either um, grow the hay or they feed the, their animals hay. And then apples, and you can use mini erasers again. Um, I have the, um, the fruit counter, so yeah. So um, apples, and then I did sheep, cows, and pigs. And again, you can use like real animals like this if you want, if you have enough. Or you can use counters. It's totally whatever works for you. Here is the pond stew. So all of these so far, so the farm, transportation, fairy tales, polar animals, pets, clothing, zoo, um, pond. These are all in the themed stew bundle, just so you guys know. Oh, and so there's little ducky. So I had these from the dollar store a while ago. But I, I'm sure they, um, we're going to get them back in the springtime, which is probably when you'll do your pond theme anyway. So little duckies and then sticks, or you can call them logs. I think I call them logs. Oh, no sticks. I call them sticks. And then lily pads, which I just made with um, foam. And then I'm using those same frogs from the princess stew or the fairy tale stew. And then I have dragonflies, which are just my insect counters. And then fish I have empty because I think the fish are in another stew. Um, so yeah, so I'll just put my fish counters in there when it's for this stew. So this is the pond stew. Okay, I have more coming. And then, let's show me. Okay, so here is the 3D shape stew. So I know, like, I probably won't use this one with my pre and pre-K kiddos, but I know a lot of kinder teachers were wanting it, so I went ahead and added it. This one is in the math concepts stew pack or the bun the big bundle. So I have um, triangular prisms, and I have cylinders, and then cubes, rectangular prisms, spheres, and cones, which we made out of paper. And these are actually just wooden beads. Um, and then these are like Melissa and Doug blocks. So you can kind of walk around and see if you have any beads or blocks that would work. But we had to make um, our own little cones. And if you wanted to, because I know one of the Common Core standards is for kiddos to recognize um, shapes in our environment. So you could um, like grab like a whole bunch of little balls for these, grab a whole bunch of, um, I have ideas on there like um, dice for the cubes. You, um, but I have ideas if you wanted to use everyday objects for um, this. So here is the Earth Day stew, which I know people have been asking about too. I totally forgot about doing that one last year because I really didn't think these would be, be that fun. But the kids love them and we love them and they're the most important part about it is the kids play them, right? They pick them when they do centers independently and they are happy to play them if you do them for small group or an activity. So um, I actually, I found these at the dollar store. So how much fun would it be if they mixed their stew, earth stew ingredients in a recycling bin? And I think these are like, I think they're supposed to be like, oh, they're supposed, it says on the bottom, they're supposed to be pencil holders. You might be able to find them online too. So you can, instead of using a stew pot, you could use a recycling bin. 
Um, so for the earth stew, I did include earth printables in case you can't find earth, earths, <laughs> planet earths. And then I have kind of the things you recycle. So I have um, foil for, um, oh, for the metal. I have cardboard, plastic, and I just use plastic tops and then paper, just balled up some paper. And then I did compost and I just put in some fruit counters. So that is the fruit stew. So another one of that new holiday stews is a USA stew. And I call it USA that way if you do, if you um, have, such, if you're in, in over the summer, you can use this for 4th of July, or maybe you do President's Day, or maybe you could use it around voting, which I know I'm a little late, right? <laughs> um, but yeah, so I just called it USA stew, so you can kind of use it for kind of all of the America or USA holidays. Um, so yeah. So here's my USA stew. So I have eagles, and I included a printable of an eagle. I'm a bald eagle. That way, um, if you can't find any, you got some. And then I have stars and stripes for the flag. And then I found last year um, flag mini erasers. Um, but I also included a flag printable in case you can't find little flags. And then coins. And then fireworks, which I just made with um, sparkly pipe cleaners. So that, ooh, <laughs> that, that is the America stew, or USA stew, sorry. And then um, some of my teachers were requesting um, a, um, a Hanukkah stew. And I will say this one is, was the items were tricky to find. So um, the dreidels, I know last year in the Target Dollar Spot, they had a Hanukkah stuff, and they do not this year. So I found these at Party City, but I'm sure you can probably buy them like off Amazon or Oriental Trading, but I didn't have time for everything to come in. So I just found these at Party City, so I found these little dreidels. And then Gelt, I hope I'm saying that correctly, um, which is just gold coins. And then I have candles, and I just use blue birthday candles, um, and then I have gifts. And these are actually um, from like the holiday section at Walmart. And I just um, got the, the blue colors. And then I have the star and I just use star beads. And then, oh, my hair, sorry. And then I have, uh, for a donut, I just cut those again out of foam. So yeah, so yeah. That is the Hanukkah stew. And that way too, if you do um, like a Christmas around the world theme, this would work perfectly for you. So that's the Hanukkah stew, and the Hanukkah stew, and the America stew, or USA stew, and the Earth Day stew, these are in the um, holiday stew bundle because there's already Christmas in there, and Easter, and St. Patrick's Day, and all the holidays are, all, so not all the holidays are in there. I just finished up the last one. So here's one of the um, seasons too. So this is the winter one and I have like mittens. This one was already in the bundle, but I just wanted to show you in case you didn't know what this one, any of the seasons one looked like. And then these are icicles that I cut in half. They're actually like Christmas ornaments. Um, and Christmas ornaments at the dollar store are really great for stews. Um, and so are like foam stickers. Um, those are my snowflakes and snowmen and snowballs and then penguins. All right, so I can see you guys are requesting more stews. So if you guys think of other stews, actually, um, while I was making this, I'm like, oh, a pizza stew would be fun. So if you guys um, think of more stews, definitely keep sending me those ideas, and you never know when I will surprise you and say, I made more stews, or maybe I won't. I don't know, but yeah, I can't guarantee you any new stews, but if enough people ask, I usually, I usually help you guys out. So, but I want to make sure you guys want them before I make them. So yeah, a pizza one would be fun, right? And Kwanzaa, I see sports, the baggie. So I literally just take two big pieces of tape and I just tape it to the baggie. That's it. I just have it on the outside. That way if I put cards in, it doesn't get, um, I, won't, I won't be able to see it. So yeah, so here's, here's all my extra bags for all the new stews. All the new stews. <laughs> You shouldn't see the pile around me. It's a mess. So for the gingerbread stew, which is super fun. So there's peppermints, cookie dough, buttons, icing, eyeballs. So like there's buttons. So basically you're kind of building the gingerbread and then icing 
and then peppermint. And y'all might think I'm crazy, but I put out real gumballs. And then um, for cookie dough, I just used balled up tissue paper. Oh, and then um, I have eyeball too. <laughs> so yeah, so you're basically building that gingerbread man for your stew. This is one of my kiddos' favorites, um, was the gingerbread stew. It's always a really, really fun one, so yeah. So I store, I'm gonna have to get a bigger one. So I was storing everything in here until I made the new one. So I'll, oh, I might just probably add another one and then I'll probably divide it up, maybe put the holiday and you know, like themed in one and the other ones in the other. Um, but yeah, so I just store them in here. And if you want a classroom tour and I show you everything even inside my cabinets, um, I will put the link in after we're done and you can check that out. And I'll put a link in too for all of my past Facebook Lives because I do one every Wednesday. So how many, um, somebody asked how many sets do I make? So I usually just have one. So I make one set and then we, again, we either use it for small group or it's in the center. So usually if it's kiddos are using it independently, only four or five kiddos are using it at a time. And um, it's usually fine. Um, five kiddos sometimes gets a little bit tricky if you don't have more than nine of an object. Um, but if four kiddos are using it, they're like, some of them are counting, some of them are stirring, and some of them are putting it back, some of them are singing. So, and they talk about, oh, like, I don't have any left. Do you have, you know, I need three snowflakes. Can I have three of yours? And it, they have all this math conversation going. So it actually lends to some really good conversations and sharing and kind of some negotiations on, I need those, or I need two of your snowflakes. Can I borrow two? Because I need five and I have three. So they're doing lots of um, multiplica multiplication. Um, informal addition and subtraction. I will talk to you guys soon. Bye.